Let me go to my first guest tonight. Omar Abdullah joins me, former Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir. Omar Abdullah, your father, Farooq Abdullah, told us earlier today that he was very worried that we could soon have a Hindu-less Kashmir Valley if this continued. But the fact is, this has been building up for decades, including when he was Chief Minister. So it's not as if this started only in the last few months. This is a problem that the Kashmir Valley faces, the safety of Kashmiri pundits. And your point being? My point being that today it's easy for possibly the National Conference to blame the, uh, the administration, the BJP for what's happened. But over the years, no government has been able to ensure the security and safety of Kashmiri pundits. You know, Rajdeep, this is primarily the problem with you. You, you want to play this balancing act. Let's talk about what's happening now. We've done enough analysis about what happened in the 90s. We know uh, the situation that persisted there. Nobody claimed that the situation was normal in 1990. Not the government of the day, uh, nobody in the rest of the country. Contrast that with what is happening today. Uh, you have a government at the center that claims Jammu and Kashmir is normal. You have a government uh, at the center that actually, when they were uh, in opposition, uh, did everything they could to try and identify themselves with the plight of the Kashmiri Pandits. Mm -hmm. Having come to power has completely abandoned them mm -hmm. and now is refusing to accept what even your channel is able to show, which is that these houses are locked. They have locks on the outside of the gates and these people have left the valley and gone to Jammu. Now, look, I mean, we can, we can go back to 1990 and what previous governments have done, but no government in the past has denied the problem whether it was my government, whether it was Mehbooba Mufti's government, whether it was Mufti Sayyid's government, Bulam Nabi Azad's government, or Dr. Farooq Abdullah's government. We owned up to the problem. We said, look, there is a problem. Kashmiri pundits face, a, a, their sense of security has been taken away from them. Unless that sense of security is restored, they're not going to be coming back. Contrast that with the government here, that from August 2019 has been saying that abrogation of 370 is the only way Kashmiri pundits will come back. They haven't come back. In fact, they have left in even larger numbers. And the saddest thing is that the administration in Jammu and Kashmir mm -hmm. is coming up with the most ridiculous excuses or reasons for this. I have it on very good authority that one of the senior most people in, Jammu, in, in the administration mm -hmm. in Jammu and Kashmir today mm -hmm. is off the record briefing media and telling them that these people have left because winter is coming. Now, these people didn't leave in winter for the last 30 years. Our, our winter hasn't even started. Mm -hmm. Winter starts in January and February. Mm -hmm. And yet, for some reason, this administration would like to believe that these Kashmiri pundits have suddenly developed an aversion to the cold and have moved to Jammu for the winter. Look, admit there's a problem and mm -hmm. then start finding a solution. But if you're not even going to admit there's a problem, then how do you expect a solution to be found? No, I, I, I take your point that clearly the government needs to end this mood of denial that exists at the moment. But offer me a solution. You see, it appears when... when Given the challenge that one is faced with terror that, and targeted killings, it's not easy. There are no easy silver bullet solutions out there. So is there a solution that you have, something constructive that you believe that can be done? Yes, absolutely. Except that you have a problem in Kashmir. Except that 5th August 2019 was not the magical solution that you sold it as. Except that there is still a constituency in Kashmir that does not identify itself with India except that there are still youngsters that are willing to pick up the gun, except that there is a problem. I, I, I fully accept that we have a neighbor across our border in the, name, in the shape of Pakistan mm -hmm. that will try and fish in troubled waters, that will create trouble. But they're not the be-all and end-all of the trouble in Jammu and Kashmir. A lot of what happens is internal. It's created internally, but yet we're living in denial. We want to convince ourselves that because there are a handful more tourists this year than they were a few years ago, mm -hmm. that suddenly everything is great and that there is no problem in, in Jammu and Kashmir, whereas the facts on the ground are completely contrary to that. No, but the targeted killings of Kashmiri pundits in particular, is, there, is, there, is this purely, do you see it purely in terms of law and order and security? Or should we see it, as you seem to be suggesting, as part of a wider political crisis that still, or a political vacuum that exists, as a result of which, according, it seems from what you're saying, decision-making uh, is functioning in a vacuum at the moment. Of course, it's functioning in a vacuum. Rajdeep, why didn't you see these killings when I was in office? Look, I know we had a lot of problems. You and I can debate for, for hours on end about the acts of omission and commission that took place when I was, in, when I was chief minister. But you didn't see things like this. Mm -hmm. In fact, you saw the reverse. You saw the JNK administration working with the administration in Delhi 
under Dr. Manmohan Singh to actually encourage Kashmiri Pandits to come back. Mm -hmm. You had them coming back in the thousands to take up jobs in the valley. They were living there peacefully. They were working peacefully. Those same Kashmiri Pandit employees are today on strike in Jammu. They're refusing to go back. Their strike, as per your report just now, has gone into its 136th or 137th day. Now, these were employees that were brought in under a special package together with, with my government and Dr. Manmohan Singh's government. So it's not as if it's always been doom and gloom. We've actually had times when we've been able to encourage Kashmiri pundits to go back. No, so but what's what, happened now? What is the, the situation has reversed. <clears throat> what is the responsibility, though, of the valley parties? What can the valley-based parties do? At the moment, you're saying the administration has failed, the administration lives in denial. But for the valley-based parties, is this a moment to say, I told you so? rather than offering no, solutions. Not. Look, none of, us are none of us are happy with this. But please, I'm sorry, don't look to the value-based parties now to find a solution to this. We're not in administration. Have an election, uh, put an elected government in place, and then hold the value-based parties or the, the government of the day responsible. We are not in power. We haven't been in power for a number of years now. But the, I, you, should hold those to, you should hold those people to account who claim that the situation is normal. No, absolutely. I'm, I, you know, no one is denying and we'll have uh, guests from the BJP joining me in a moment I, as well as the administration as to what they're doing. But I, I will ask you still in conclusion, is there something that you and others can do? You've been a chief minister, Mehbooba has been, your father has been, some goodwill gesture <coughs> that you believe can restore an element of confidence and trust? You know, Rajdeep, when people are being gunned down the way these people are, words from our side will sound hollow. My words are not going to stop these attacks. My words are not going to stop the, the targeted killings. I wish they were, because we have been, we have been vociferous and vocal in condemning these attacks, in, in trying to ensure that the situation does not go out of hand. We've been advising the government. I'll, I'll give you a small example. Uh, not, not, I mean, I think the, not the last time, but the time before that, about a month and a half ago, when there was a targeted attack against Kashmiri pundits in, in uh, South Kashmir. Mm -hmm. My father rang up the lieutenant governor of his own accord. He didn't wait to be called. He picked up the phone. He called the lieutenant governor. He said, sir, this is not your fight alone. It is everybody's fight. Please call all of us. Call an all-party meeting. We would like to come there so we will stand together with you and make an appeal for this violence to stop. This day and that day, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant governor completely ignored now, this is somebody who is a sitting member of parliament, a former union minister, a former chief minister. You look towards the valley parties to do something. When we stand up and want to be counted, when we stand up and want to help, when we stand up and want to join our voice with the voice of the administration, the lieutenant governor completely blanks us out. He couldn't care less. Okay. Those are strong words from what you are saying, Omar Abdullah. Those are words that hopefully will also echo and spark off the much needed dialogue without which the valley functions in a vacuum. But I appreciate your joining us with your plain speaking here on the news today. Thank you so much.